Oh, I I'm gonna go yeah. page yeah. one yeah. by one. You really held that. You didn't give it away. Alright, so you have to say that we talked about special numbers and how these numbers show up. It's uh, kind of the quickest and easiest to go after. So you really hope to see uh, the perfect. And the fraction problems because that means you can factor by square rooting. So on number two, we got good news. Sixty-four. The square root of sixty-four is eight. And we got more good news. You can also square root forty-nine. You have to be able to square root both of them to use this um, square root method. So if I need to factor it, I'm going to write two sets of parentheses. It's going to factor into two binomials. And so I'll square root 64 to get 8, and it'll have an M as well. 8M and 8M. And then I'll square root 49 to get 7, and it'll have an N as well. And I'll use a plus and a minus sign. And that's factored. Done deal. Quickest way to factor is with perfect squares. Any questions on that one? Okay, number three. No good. There's no perfect squares. None of the numbers will square root. So what can we do? What are we going to do something here? Yes, always, always, if you can. If if you can take a greatest common factor, always take it out. No matter what, whether it's grouping or it's a trinomial or anything, always take out a GCF. So if there's no square roots, look for a greatest common factor. So mm -hmm. Mikhail says 192 divides by 3. Yeah. What is it? 64. Okay, so... I could divide both of these by 3 and by r. This has r to the third and this has r to the first, so I'll take an r as well. So 3 r to the third divided by 3 r leaves you with r squared. And 192 divided by 3 is 64. Greatest common factor. Now we have good news. Good news, these numbers square root. The invisible one here, square root, r squared, square root, so 64 can be written down. Sometimes you have to do something in the beginning. So we're going to keep going. We're going to focus on these parentheses. That's going to be rewritten as two binomials. R plus 8, R minus 8, and the 3 R stays out front. Put that in a GCF. We'll finish it over there for later. Nice. Very good. Very good. Number four has a different set of directions. This says solve, and it has an equal sign and a zero. So there's more steps in four as well. All right, so good news. 36 square roots, and so does 121. 121 was in our last Do you guys know the square root of 121? Oh, 11. Good, good, good. So we'll write it with two sets of parentheses. 6w plus 11, 6w minus 11. This is the plus and the minus sign. We can use the zeros in it all. This equals zero. So in order to solve, we have to break off. We haven't done this since break and do two little mini equations.
Now that we don't have w squared, that's the whole purpose of factoring, taking w squared and separating it, now you can just solve two linear equations. And we like fractions more than decimals on these problems. We have to let me throw both sides. This w is negative 11. Divide by 6. W is negative 11 over 6. And we'll do it again. Add 11. Show your work. 6W is 11. Divide in W is 11 over 6. Two answers. Does anybody um remember why these problems have two answers or can anybody describe what these answers look like on the graph? It's an arch, it's a parabola, and these are the intercepts. So if I had to graph this, if this was negative one and this was one and this is two and this is negative 2. I have two points on the graph already. What's this? Almost negative 2. If this was a 12, that would be negative 2. So I have a point here and a point here. You guys remember our whole goal is to really connect these problems to the parabola graph. So next chapter we're graphing these answers. All right, let's look at your homework. Page 11610. I just got another factor. That's why. That's the first thing with prime. Yeah. Prime just means you can't do it. There's no way to factor it. Well, that's page number five if, if you went with it. I went with it. That's it's okay if you went with it. No one ever told you not to. I'm just telling you for the first time right now. If it's not a minus sign, you can't do it since five times negative five has to be a negative 25 every time. Minus 
right, let's talk about what probably <clears throat> you did um, on number six. And how there's kind of more than one right way to do that. So, on number six, maybe you went ahead and did probably. In fact, I hope you have this written. So this is how we practice it in class. So there's something interesting here. There's something interesting here that's going to cause you to lose a little bit of credit. Not total credit. What's interesting is that both of these have a GCF in them. So when you ask for factor, you really should for factor like ten or twenty. Um. So like if you look at number two, like eight and seven, M and N, like nothing can come out. But here, I see that both of these are even. They can both divide by 2. So really, I could make this 3 plus 5w in this one as well. And these two twos multiply to make it a 4. So go ahead and, and take a 2 out of each of these. And make that a four. Now, the way to avoid that is to always look for the greatest common factor. Mm -hmm. So here, these both happen to divide by four. So I would take a four out from the start, and I would have nine minus twenty-five w squared. Because thirty-six divided by four is nine, and one hundred divided by four is twenty-five. So that takes you right to the final answer. So it's best to take the GCF out on the first one as well. Are you going to follow that? You should tell me what? Well, put this one. So this is required classwork. I'd like to even put it on a, a bell work quiz. We're still practicing the same topic. Factor. You guys can start as I'm ready. Get ahead of me. Okay. Time problems right now for practice. Yes. 
Uh, what? Why did we agree to take five? Do they both divide by two? Yeah. They both divide by two. Turns out they're both even. So that's how things came out. 32 divided by 2 is 16, and 18 divided by 2 is 9. Now that's good news. I was stuck here. Now that I've divided by 2, I can choose to discuss their numbers, these numbers that square root. So I'm very happy with taking that. Sorry, I missed the C. I'm very happy with taking that 2 out. Because now I can square root 16 to get 4. And I can square root 9 to get 3. The 2 stays out front. Now the black parallel has a median and the pink has a curve. They are equivalent. They represent the same thing. Is this right? Yeah. It really doesn't. Neither one is good. I could have put the minus in the middle and then put the minus on the other side. Number two, I'm really trying hard to divide both of these by three. It doesn't. It doesn't divide both. And it doesn't divide by two, and it doesn't divide by nine. And it doesn't square root. So, done. This, this one can't be done. Yeah, those are cute. So here's the starting point. Three to four, nine. I mean, go as far as you can. Don't stop.
yeah, GCF is five, and they also have a Q. They both divide by five, and I can take a Q out. So 45 divided by five is nine. We'll have a Q squared. And 20 divided by five is four. This is great. Nine square root. Four square root. So the first term in each parentheses will be the square root of nine, which is three. And the second term will be two. We do a plus and a minus, and the five Q stays out front. Well, I just have to say that you, I thought you moved more quickly than me. I'm kind of like, hey, this is just like the homework one, huh? Backwards, I wonder who's going to catch it. All right, so I don't know how many of you did this before before I begin it. I'm going to divide both by 4b. Maybe you did two. If you did two, you're kind of stuck. Dividing by 4b makes this 25b squared minus 9. And 25 and 9 square root. So that would be 5b as our first term. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 9 is 3. We do a plus and a minus and keep the GCF out front. Second round on that problem. So the next six are different. They have equal signs. They have to be solved squarely. The equation. So, um, The directions won't tell you that. For these particular problems, the square back differentiation is called zero. So I really, really need a zero here. So I'm going to put a line in, and I'm going to subtract this 81. So the new problem is 4y squared minus 81 equals 0. is both of those square root. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 81 is 9. You need a plus sign and a minus sign. And now, since we're asked to solve, we're going to do this in the type of four of Bowert and do many equations. 2y plus 9 equals 0. 2y minus 9 equals 0. Put your little parentheses up. Okay. 
fraction answers, not decimals. So our two answers are negative nine over two and positive nine over two. Now I'm going to wait. See how you do on your test too. Well, number eight, you're probably stuck on, but. So hopefully you guys um, were able to recognize the greatest common factor of two. Six. Fifty doesn't divide by six. No, 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 no six. 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 Okay, so put my line in. Subtract nine from both sides. Sixty four P squared minus nine equals zero. Those are great numbers. I love sixty four and nine. They can be rewritten. Eight P plus three. Eight P minus three equals zero. Sorry, I'm erasing that one. I hope you're done with it. And then you do the two equations. AP plus three is three and AP minus three. I'm sorry, zero. P is negative 3 over 8, and P is positive 3 over 8. So no six. Those last two equations. So by square reading, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that.
for it. We're going to get to that later in the chapter. All right, so here, divide by 2. We end up with 49b squared minus 25 equals 0. We recognize 49 and 25, those are good numbers. Seven B plus five, seven B minus five with the two out front. I'm just gonna do this on the screen so you can see it easier. Okay, so I'll I really had it. So I'm here. So I'm going to do all parts. I'm going to say 2 equals 0. 7b plus 5 equals 0. And 7b minus 5 equals 0. So the 2, 2 doesn't equal 0. So I'm going to put a line through it. It's not a solution. Right? That doesn't work. And I'm going to focus my efforts on these two mini equations. Subtract 5. I get 7b equals negative 5. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So b is negative 5 over 7. B equals 5, so B equals positive 5 over 7. So these are the answers, and the 2 is just kind of rejected. But it's important to show the work, because at some point, like if the 2 had a B with it, then it would be part of the answer. But 2 doesn't need to be there. Alright, we're ready for number 8. Who's got a question on that one? Okay, number 8. Uh, I need to get one. I broke my iPhone. Really bad too. Think on that. So how do we square root a fraction? Keep the top and bottom separate. I knew that. You had no idea. Yeah. This is fine. All this math is hurting my brain. The square root of 64 over 121. You can just do the top separate from the bottom. It's 8 over 11. Okay, this is okay. We can do this. So here's my parentheses. It's going to be t plus 8 over 11. 
in t minus 8 over 11. <clears throat> it's okay. It's the same thing, but you have a small part. Okay, from here, t plus 8 over 11 is 0. t minus 8 over 11 is 0. Solve them both. T is negative 8 over 11, and T is positive 8 over 11. Yeah, but how do you get the square root and then you subtract and divide it where it's or the square root? Like, wouldn't it only be square root if it's on the other side of the equation? Yeah, I'm talking about like, yeah, essentially. Yeah, so I reckon you can solve it. Yeah, don't give me the original part. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I If I were to foil this, I would get 6 to 4. You'll fall behind. Oh, we have a mini test tomorrow. No. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I am sore. Oh, I think it's what you know. We're not going to have it. What? Yeah. Oh, let's do homework. Because we're the only home that has is math. Does 162 divide by 4? Does it divide by 8? Does it divide by 16? Does it divide by 32? Does 162 divide by 32? Then it's prime. Only two. They're both even. So we can definitely take a 2 by Remember that. When they're both even, you can definitely take 2. Prime. I today I got one extra hour of sleep. Three hours of sleep. Alright, 162 divided by 2 is 81, 32 divided by 2. It's sure decent. Alright, good news. These numbers square root were plus 9k, minus 9k. Is two negatives make a positive? So we have a positive four nine two and a negative four nine. Wow, problem is so innocent. So much work. Give it little fractions at the end. Last one. 